gentlemen, and welcome to the Lair of the Film Exorcist. Well, this has been a long time coming, and it's finally here. Because tonight, we will be taking a look at Star Wars Episode 9, The Rise of Skywalker. This time, Rey and her allies join forces for one last time to defeat the First Order and the evil Emperor Palpatine. <laughs> now, on to my opinion. This movie is turning into one of the most controversial of the franchise next to The Last Jedi, which I hated. There's the people like me who loved it and will recognize it as one of the best movies of the series, and then there's the people like Catastrophe and Mulder and a hundred other YouTube reviewers who believe it's too flawed to be good. This movie has been 40 years in the making, and now it has brought the entire Skywalker story to a nice close. So tonight, you guys get to hear my side of the story on why I feel it's just as good as The Empire Strikes Back. Now I just want to say that I didn't learn about Star Wars until around 4 or 5 years old, and this is because I was born a year after Episode 1, The Phantom Menace, so some of you out there might say my opinion is invalid or it means nothing, but honestly, I feel that as a Star Wars fan, my opinion has to be heard when it comes to this movie. And I have to say that this has got to be one of my favorites in the entire saga because of what a huge impact it has had on society. I will also say that unlike most, I enjoyed Rey's arc throughout the entire sequel trilogy. She has gone through a lot and during this movie, she receives one of the biggest reveals in Star Wars next to Dark Vader's confession to Luke on Bespin. To learn that she was born from darkness only to join the light is in a sense a form of how Revan was born into the light, turned to the dark side, and then brought back to the light side, which is what makes it so cool for me. I'd also like to reveal I predicted Palpatine would come back as a clone, just like in the Shadows of Empire books. And that's because it was a little too obvious since Palpatine makes it clear that it's something that many would feel is unnatural, which could only be cloning. Plus, Disney has been taking from Legends a lot recently, so why not take from one of the most known book series ever in Legends? Now everyone complains about Palpatine's return, claiming that it ruins the, the ending of the original trilogy, claiming that Anakin's sacrifice was a waste. But I'm guessing not many of those people have watched TV or movies in their entire lives because this trope has been happening a lot. But this time it's done in a much bigger way. And really, nobody complained when Revan came back in the Old Republic game as a force ghost and a dark entity. Now on to the real reasons why I like this movie, which is, this is a Star Wars movie. And it's just as unique as the others. Yes, we were sent from planet to planet looking for something similar to The Force Awakens, but this time, the stakes are a whole lot higher. Unlike the rest of our heroes, they aren't trying to get some plans or a map to the good guys. They're going off on a mission to save the entire galaxy from the Sith and the First Order, and this time, they have one of the biggest fleets in Star Wars history, and on top of that, we finally learn the true origins of Rey, which many have been waiting for since we first met her and since people started predicting that she was Luke's daughter. Which, sorry guys, you're wrong, and this is a whole lot better. Now, I also have to say that the scene with C-3PO and the rest of the group on Kajimi was honestly one of the saddest scenes in the movie and I personally wish that Abrams had let it play out but it didn't really change my opinion of the movie because again it was just a really great scene I mean yeah it would have me meant more if C-3PO died or completely lost his memory like during A New Hope but what does it matter he's a still a great character and same for Chewie if he died yeah, it wouldn't have really changed the story that much. I'm also a bit sad about the Dark Ray, which confirmed that Ray was going to stay good, but honestly, I really wanted Ray to turn to the dark side and use the blade staff that her dark vision used. 
But I guess the lightsaber she has now is pretty cool too. I mean, it's made from her staff, and it's just, it's a whole new design for a lightsaber and a whole new way to turn it on. Yeah, I am sad that she's not on the dark side or she, the dark side didn't win. I personally like the dark side. I've always been a fan of it. I've always rooted for the bad guys, but this is good too. I mean, I still enjoy it. It doesn't change my opinion, but oh well. Um, and my favorite scene in the entire movie has got to be the space battle near the end. Because just seeing all these ships from canon and legends just made me feel so nostalgic. I mean, I literally said during my first viewing or first review of a Star Wars movie that I love space battles, guys. I've always loved them, and I always enjoy watching them in a Star Wars movie. So this was a huge surprise and just so big for me as a Star Wars fan. And it brought me to tears because I'm sure any fan would be happy to see their favorite cruisers and frigates and freighters as they take on the biggest fleet in the world. And it's also one of the most suspenseful scenes of the movie. And this is the first canon appearance of Force Storm. One of the most powerful forms of Force Lightning in all of Star Wars and Legends. And I'm also a fan of the fight between Rey and Kylo Ren. And this is because I've always loved a good lightsaber battle. I mean, from Episode 1 to Episode 6, they've all been good. Duel of Fates was amazing. Battle of the Heroes was godly. And this one, it's just awesome. We also get the amazing fight between... Kylo Ren and the Knights of Ren, which was pretty cool, especially with the Force Vision with Rey. And it was amazing. It was a great ending to this movie. And I don't mind the idea of Force healing because it has always been there, guys. How have you not seen it? Obi-Wan used it in A New Hope on Luke, and it's been done in video games and books. So get over it. It's a thing in Star Wars, and it always will be, and always has been. So let it go. Now for the pacing problem, which really doesn't exist. I felt the speed of the film was perfect, and doesn't need to be changed. And that's why, during half of the film, I actually ended up checking how long I had been watching, because it seemed longer than the first time. I feel this movie should have been a lot longer than it already is, but I do understand why they had to, and that was because if they put too much in the movie, it might have felt cheap and old and boring if so much explanation was put into all these scenes. So leave it alone, it was a perfect ending. Finally, I'm very proud of the ending which took us back to where it all began, and I don't mind Rey taking the Skywalker name, cause no matter what. She's still Rey, and despite whatever I said before, I really like the design of Rey's new lightsaber, especially how it turns on, which it's not that button that everyone uses, it's like a, like one of those twist flashlights, which is pretty cool, and honestly, this is one of the best ways that this saga could have ended, and I can't imagine it ending any other way, so to me, Rise of Skywalker has got to be one of the best Star Wars movies since Episode 3, and I can't help but give this movie a 10 out of 10 for how well it brought everything together, ending the 43 year old story that I love so much, and honestly, screw everything else, it brought me to tears, It it's just a really good Star Wars movie, and it was how I needed it. We got the space battles, we got the lightsaber battles, we got the adventure, we got our characters, and just a great bad guy to go up against. I mean, I highly recommend this to any Star Wars fan out there, and I implore you to go buy the Blu-ray at Walmart for the documentary on how they made this movie. And all the other special features which I'm going to watch after this. Because I love the documentary. It 
I almost cried at the end of that because it takes elements from A New Hope, it takes elements from all the movies, and it puts it together into one big story of how this came to be. So please go watch it. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And may the force be with you always, ladies and gentlemen. And we will see you next week on the Film Exorcist.